was about to say good evening and realised I hadn't got the mic turned on. So that does help if we turn the mic on. Good evening. Welcome to the stream this evening. And I've got a little pushy cat here. She, um, yeah, you can just about see her. She just wandered in and started rubbing around my legs. So just picked her up for a little bit. Hmm? Yeah. You can't go on the desk, but you're feeling a bit shy. Hmm? Just give her a little bit of attention and then we'll put her down and we'll do some more of this lion. You're not going to purr? No. This is Emmy. Emmy the Pussycat. We haven't done her portrait yet. We've got one of Felix, we've got one of uh, Junior. We're working on one of uh, Theo, which I don't particularly feel inspired to work on tonight. And uh, we'll have to do one of Emmy at some point. I'm not quite sure. We might do that in scraper board perhaps. Since she's sort of grey and black. And that might be an appropriate medium. Should we put you down now, Emmy? Hey. Let's put you down. And to go on that seat. Yeah, settle down there. You can't go on the desk. But, uh, right. Magic dots, diamond dots, whatever you want to call them. Um, we're going to do some more of this. Let's um, just bring the, excuse me a second, I'm just going to raise the desk. Just a little bit. Which makes it a bit easier to work on. So, I believe this is a clone of Diamond Dots, but um, it's fun, ne no, never, nevertheless. So, uh, number six is what we're doing now, which is the next colour. So, we'll just get number six, which they come in these uh, packets. You know, oh, it's a sound, is it? That, she perked up all of a sudden when she heard the um, heard these things rattle. She's probably spent the day chasing flies. And it's not cat food either. Know that because the Felix hasn't come money. When you open a uh, open the box of uh, cat biscuits, I don't know what it is. Cats can hear that from about sixteen miles away. <laughs> yeah, Felix comes running, no matter where he is, he comes running. And generally speaking, when you open a packet of food of any kind, they all four come running from wherever they are. Uh, I don't know how they manage to hear. Right, so let's move that off the way there. So, just sticking these on there. <laughs> so, I'm going to start with knowing number six here. And we'll start at the bottom. Actually, I should do this with another pair of glasses on. It'd be easier to see. So, let me just swap them since they happen to be here. That's better. I can see the numbers now. So, I've spent the day decorating again. Uh, I've been spraying a room. So, hopefully... I'm getting closer to being finished and then I don't have to do that anymore and I can come back to doing streaming more often which will be nice I'm kind of getting a bit tired of the decorating but it has to be done so the sooner I complete it the sooner it's finished which is kind of obvious I guess but so if I take time off then uh, it just takes longer. But it's been out this weekend has been some rather late uh, late hours. 
I think what did I do yesterday? About 13 hours non-stop decorating. Today I did, what would it have been? Five, hey, about, not as much today, only about seven hours. Um, but I'm kind of feeling it somewhat of a bit frazzled. I just want to relax, which is why I'm not doing the pyrography tonight. That takes a bit more concentration. I'm not tired, but um, I'm just not in the mood for uh, concentrating on pyrography. I kind of would like to, to do something like that, but um, so just not in the mood. Earlier this week I installed the, the most recent version of Painter, Painter 2018 which looks quite nice and uh, that was kind of inspiring it sort of at the time especially when I installed it on, on the tablet which is in front of me I kind of uh, wanted to to play with it and do something so kind of felt a little bit inspired by the fact that uh, I installed it which is great I might actually start and do some drawing again which is something I also haven't done for quite a long time and given some of the views I've got from my garden, it's uh, it's kind of a pity I don't do more drawing. But we shall see. It's summer. As I say, once the decorating's out of the way, I'll have more time. I want to do, I actually want to fly the helicopters as well this year. Excuse me a second. <coughs> I didn't actually fly them last year, which surprised me. And uh, it would be nice to do that again. Again, I've got more space here where the new studio is, so I can actually sort of fly them a bit more easily than where I used to before. So this is more space in the garden. It's kind of silly though, I'm really only interested in hovering helicopters. Also get the truck out as well, the articulated truck, and that would be uh, quite fun as well. There's a project I keep meaning to do on that, which is to um, have the lights radio controlled. It's not got lights at the moment, but add lights and make them radio controlled so the trailer lights work with the uh, tractor unit on the front. The kits that you can get for um, for lighting, you have to plug in, plug physically plug them into the uh, the tractor unit for the trailer lights to work, and then that kind of makes it pointless having a remote um, mechanism by which you can raise and lower the legs and therefore decouple the trailer. If you uh, if you can if you've got to go up up to it to uh, unplug the lights before you can then walk away and decouple it. It's kind of a bit pointless. Well, I kind of feel it that way. So <clears throat> I want at some point to make them work by remote control. Another one of those projects which I sort of started and never, never really finished. But I even got as far as the designing the circuit board, but it kind of stalled as I was designing the software. And that was partly because I didn't want to design it just for one truck, I actually wanted to design it such that I could use it on more than one truck without having to sort of specifically program it now write the program specific for the unit it was connected to but anyway <coughs> it has apparently been a nice day out today and quite warm 
Something you haven't really noticed because, as I mentioned, I was decorating. And that involved <coughs> using a big spray gun and that, when you compress air, it gets warm. So the room I was in was really warm. So I never noticed if it was warm out or not. It's feeling a bit warm in here at the moment. Wait, 24 and a half degrees. Must be the humidity because there's times when that feels cold. Uh, humidity, weird stuff. Changes how everything feels. And there's a, one of these days, I'm going to have to investigate moving this camera. Maybe get a different view. Like top down, because <coughs> it's kind of, it's sort of in the way really. Um, I almost could do with it on top of my head, but uh, that wouldn't be a very good view for you guys, because it would probably move about too much. And that would, I know, tend to make people feel sick. Or at least it would make me feel sick. Because <clears throat> I've seen some videos like that and it just doesn't work. You need a fairly static camera when you're doing things like this. Music just then that there was a th uh, just a theme in it then which just reminded me of the theme uh, from an old television program called um, well it was Robinson Crusoe I can't actually remember what the program was called but it was called Robinson Crusoe uh, and there's a there's a theme tune the, oh there is a theme tune hey amazing there's a theme tune for a television program um, <clears throat> front page news. But the theme tune, it just reminded me of it then. It's quite a haunting tune. From time to time I go looking for it and see if I can find it in such a format <clears throat> that I'd be able to record it. But I only ever find clips. Finding the right thing, but I only ever find clips. I'm not actually sure I recall what the track name is called. I must, uh, must have another go at finding it. Just one of those things that you sort of remember from childhood, really. It was a program I used to watch. Essentially, as far as I'm aware, it was literally just a retelling of the Robinson Crusoe book by Daniel Defoe, but uh, it was done really well. Oh, as a kid, that's what I thought at the time. Of course, back then there was only two or three channels. <laughs> oh, blimey. It's amazing how far things have come these days. Well, we have hundreds of television channels. We broadcast them from satellite and cable and terrestrial. And we've got all these music services. We've got the internet, which is... Uh, commonplace and I'm just thinking then as a kid just about all of that would have seemed like fantasy science fiction here in the UK we had um, one or two channels I remember three actually um, the BBC one BBC two and ITV and it was only relatively <coughs> later than that we got Channel 4. That's a long time later there. And it's, <coughs> it's kind of amazing just how much has happened in relatively few years. Can I find that dot? Yes, I can. I just don't want to leave it around on the floor. Yeah, 
even things like I'm trying to think whether transistors were around at the time yes I think they were but it's um, you know I remember watching the moon landing staying up and watching it live um, what I can't remember is whether I saw it on a black and white television or a colour television but you know, so the first moon landing they um, the first uh, the first time the space shuttle was rolled out and all sorts of things like that you know computers the first desktop computer the IBM PC and it's kind of uh, amazing to think that all of those things have happened in the last 50 years or even less I mean it's not that long ago that you know, man couldn't fly. There was no such thing as aeroplanes, and yeah, you know, we've had Concorde. We've gone to the moon. It's kind of amazing. Makes you wonder what's going to happen in the next fifty years. Whether it's going to there's going to be something equally as um, spectacular. things I'll have to do is see if there is a way of me doing this without having my head bent over quite so much. It gets your neck, makes your neck a bit um, stiff. Because you sort of got your head down all the time. I wonder what I'm doing when I just drop it out like that. All I'm doing is persuading some of these dots to turn over. They only go one way. They're sort of dome shaped with a flat bottom and the flat bottom is what wants to go on to the adhesive. I said the flat bottom, not the side. Um, Managed to pick up two there by some uh, chance. Yep, so this is just kind of a could you call it high tech painting by numbers? <laughs> um, or low tech painting by numbers. It's certainly a painting by numbers type of activity. Still it's fascinating to see the, the picture evolve before you. I mean it's uh, you can see the picture anyway I mean it's, it's printed it's in colour and yet there's something different about it when you put the put the dots on. And not just that it sparkles more, but it just seems more of a complete picture somehow. And that's probably completely just fanciful imagination on my part, really. Certainly going to need to get some more of these out, but we'll use up what I've got first. I 
and of course when you want them to turn over they won't because they're like that inanimate objects always against you Get a few more out because I'm going to need them. Don't know how many I'm going to need, but we'll get a few. Let's have a drink. Just looking over to one side, I've got some plastic kits over there that I uh, keep meaning to do. I don't know if I'll do those on stream. I don't know if there's anybody watching that has any sort of opinion whether they'd like to see some plastic airfix kits or Revel or whatever they are kits uh, done on stream. Um, I'm not actually sure whether Twitch allows that. I shall have to read up the rules. I think actually I suspect it does. I know we can't make can't make Lego models. Oh no, you, uh, you must be able to. I saw somebody do it the other day. Ah, I can't remember. I shall have to read the rules again. See what we can and can't do. I've also yeah, I've also got a truck to build. Um, a one twelfth, one fourteenth. What are they? I can't remember it's a, whether it's a 1 12th or a 1 14th scan. It's quite large. Whatever the tank is, it's the opposite. <laughs> I do know. One's 1 12th and one's 1 14 scale. In fact, I ought to finish the tank off, but it needs some air bushing first. So. Once I get the airbrushing set up, so once all the decorating's done, I start doing things like airbrushing again. I can airbrush the uh, the turret on the tank, and we can get uh, get that complete. It's a remote control model, which is half finished. The lower half with the track, and uh, yeah, with the track is uh, complete. I've got the turret to complete building there, but you kind of need to paint it as you go along. Otherwise, it's too hard to do afterwards. Well, it's not too hard. You can do it, but it's a heck of a lot easier if you do it beforehand. a lot of things to do here. In fact sometimes there's so many choices it's kind of hard to make a choice because there's too many choices. I mentioned I've got the two, yeah I've got the the, uh, uh, the truck to do. I've actually got two truck kits, um, one of which I'll nick the cab out of and perhaps uh, do an interior cab for the truck I've already got. But I've got another uh, truck to build. I've got a trailer to build, which is a tanker. Uh, I've got some bits and plans to make a low loader so that the truck will pull the pull a little loader with the tank on it um, and I've got other things to have I finished all the six um, other things to do I've got a, a small laser cutter laser engraver it'll cut paper um, a small one of those to put together I've got a 3d printer to put together um, I've got those model kits 
that I mentioned, the, the helicopters. I love helicopters for some reason. I also love um, anything with lots of wheels. So I've got the, yeah, I've got a body for a two or six wheel race car to complete. And I'm just looking. That's on top of all the other crafts like this or the pyrography or the scraper board or I've got probably hundreds of cross stitches and tapestries to do. Um, I want to do glass blowing as I mentioned. I've got the helicopters to fly. I've got some latch hook rugs which I can do on stream. I've got some punch craft rugs to do which I could do on stream. Um, there's just that much. Well, that's a tanker trailer. I'm sure I've, I've got something else as well. And then there's the laser cutters. Something else that's that small to, to build somewhere around here. Hmm. Uh, all of which I can do on stream. So, um, yeah, maybe I'll have to get into doing it. But um, as I say, I've got to finish the decorating first. Well, and this number six is left here. And then, oh yes. No, that's an eight. Is that a six or an eight? That's an eight. Um, but of course, the other thing I want to do is try out glass work, flame working. And if I start doing that, then I might be doing that for quite a lot of time. Hmm. I will have to turn that off. Excuse me a second. Hmm. That's whatever the assistant is on that computer. Under Windows, what is it? It's not Alexa, it's uh, the Windows one anyway. For some reason, I suddenly started perking up. I'd never done it previously, but in about the past week, it's triggered on uh, various, well, various vid videos. It's just triggered on me then, for some reason. And... Uh, Yeah, it's sort of reacting to things which are not its wake up words, so unless they've um, got sort of sneaking and taken that away so that uh, it will start to react and people will use it more. But the only thing I want voice control for actually is. I was about to say there's only about one thing I need. I want voice control for, but it's probably a few things. But the the main one is for shopping lists, daft as it sounds. Because when you're in the kitchen and you sort of just got something out of the cupboard and it's the last one, or you've just used something, and I just want to be able to sort of call out and say, hey, add something to the shopping list. Um, because you, otherwise you tend to forget, especially if it's things that you don't use very often, like stock cubes or something like that. Um, when you go to the supermarket and you sort of just tend to forget that you haven't got them and that you need it to, until you get back of course and you go, oh I just forgot. So um, a voice activated shopping list, so you can take a shopping list with me would be uh, quite useful. Um, and the other one uh, use for it would be to control lighting, to be able to turn lights on and off. But otherwise they don't really have much use for voice control. I don't actually find it that that accurate either. I know it's got a heck of a lot more accurate than it used to be. I remember the first um, voice dictation stuff that came out. You spent more time 
uh, correcting it than you would have done to type it out yourself. I gather it's got a lot better, but... And some people seem to have a 100% perfect uh, use of it. I just never seem to have that much success with voice dictation. Perhaps I don't speak very clearly. Maybe that's the problem. Right, all I'm doing now is just putting these away one at a time. Because I've not opened the packet right up, and I don't actually really well I do know why um, I can't just pour them back in so I kind of have to do them one at a time these two are stuck they're just the right width for the channel and so they, they stick um, the reason why I, I don't open the packet is because I don't always finish it and I don't want them wide open where it's so easy to just knock them but I'm kind of daft because I don't like throw I don't like wasting materials and yet I do not have another use for these. It's not like I could, you know, get a canvas and make my own picture very easily. I suppose I could, but um Yeah. But you, they're not a standard colour, it's not like number six is always this colour. It's not. Number six is number six for this particular um, image or this kit not a different kit has a different number or a different color which is number six so number seven this is beginning to feel like the rest of my day um, where I've been fighting with masking tape that didn't stick it's one of those it's Murphy oh yeah Murphy when you want masking tape to stick it won't when you don't want it to stick you can't get the stuff off um, so I've been spraying and whilst I've been spraying I haven't wanted the masking tape to to move because it's masking and yet the slightest bit of breeze with the uh, from the air from the air gun and the masking tape falls off and the thing it was masking falls off you know the um, plastic sheeting it was holding falls off and that's been an irritating bit of the day is that happening frequently and yet you know, you don't want it to stick to the plastic, so you want it to, you don't want it to stick to the plastic when you've accidentally just caught it against something. You know, you, you tear a bit off the reel and it just catches the plastic and it sticks there forever. It's never going to let go. And But I don't want you to, you end up just having to just put the, let the masking tape stick and not use it because it's in totally the wrong place. So these bits of, masking tape all over this plastic just because it's stuck and wouldn't let go so it doesn't let go when you want it to and when you do want it to stick it won't stick and it's kind of like but that's the whole point i mean i know they make low low tack uh, tape and the idea is that it sticks but will pull off easily afterwards and uh, but I specifically got tape that wasn't supposed to be a low tack tape because I needed it to stick it wasn't like I was going to pull off the uh, material either because I was sticking it to PVC wouldn't you in some places it wouldn't even stick to itself which was very irritating I 
And of course when you're spraying, masking is very important. Which reminds me, I forgot to clean the window. Um, because uh, it fell down whilst I was spraying. And the window got coated. And I've just realised I've forgotten to wipe that off, which would have been a heck of a lot easier whilst it was still wet. Yeah, well, that means tomorrow I'll be using a sharp knife to scrape the window. Yeah, well, actually it's emulsion paint, so I could use water. probably easier to scrape it off actually thinking about it because the water will tend to make it smear and will take more to get off. So these aren't white, they're uh, slightly grey. I guess the idea is it's just bits of bits of the main. There's probably not as much of the number seven as I thought there was. I've probably got a lot more out than I need. Which means it'll take an age to put back, but we'll put it back if we don't use it. Right, the whole patch of it here, so that should help use up some of it. So it's summer out there in internet land and twitch land which probably explains why chat is so quiet at the moment i seem to remember it was like this last year or was that the year before no last year um because it, i've uh, i streamed for a year and i've had a year effectively had a year off and we're just starting again so It was really quiet in the summer, I guess. Everybody must be out in the sunshine in whichever part of the world you're in. And of course that means m me who's talking to you at the moment while you're not here is kind of pointless. <laughs> you're not hearing me, but it gives me something to say. It's something I didn't think I'd be able to do when I first started streaming was essentially talk to myself, not only talk to myself but make sense and do it continuously for a couple of hours or however long the stream was. And I remember when I first started streaming that was perhaps one of the hardest things to do. In fact, when I first started streaming what it reminded me a lot of and still does is a training course that I did and oh, some down there and on this training course one of the exercises that we went through was doing I won't say a presentation but it was something I can't remember what exactly we were doing but they we had to do it in a room completely empty of other people like this with a television in camera in front of you like this and we to talk for about two and a half minutes um, doing whatever it was the presentation and uh, no chat nothing just the just the camera so no audio feedback no um, no feedback at all and that was one of the hardest things I'd ever done and yet now here I am um, doing it well, I used to do it on a nightly basis, 
uh, um, when I was first uh, first started streaming for two hours at a time doing exactly that an empty room with a camera and not much feedback and it was uh, it, it's just amazing how it just doesn't feel particularly difficult to do these days um, I mean even back then I got relatively used to it or rel used to it relatively quickly and was able to uh, um, you know, hold a conversation with myself for an extended period of time <laughs> Because back then I talked a lot about the craft that I was doing, but this is, you know, this as a craft is quite obvious what I'm doing, so there's not a lot to say about it. But when you're doing things like carving and pyrography, there's obviously quite a bit you can talk about in relation to the craft itself, and that helped. But of course now I just talk for two hours um, about anything that comes into my mind. Uh, like is there any more sevens on here that I've missed and if you see any let me know uh, I can't that means my last color is number eight 20 past eight <laughs> coincidentally no, there's number four there's two number fours there okay so I'll put these number sevens away I'll maybe then grab a number of four, a couple of fours, just to fill in those two that I've just seen. So easy to miss them. And then we'll do number eight. To some extent, it's a complete waste of time. <laughs> um, I could just throw them away. Um, I was about to say, uh, I, I, I won't because I might need them, but uh, I'm, um, I could keep what's left in the packet, I guess. Because things like uh, having just come across, had I thrown the number four away, the fact that there's two of them that I need to put in would mean I wouldn't have any. I've thrown them away previously, so it was a good idea keeping them. I uh, just don't know whether I need to keep that many. But this is part of part of the fun. Is it part of me? Yeah, I suppose it is partly fun putting them back in. There's something I don't know, slightly satisfying about picking them up and putting them in. The annoying thing is when they stick to the end of the tweezers, which is purely because of static electricity. So they're not sticky at all, and neither are the tweezers. Excuse me a second. I just need to disappear for a moment. I shall be back shortly.
Right, we're back. A little bit of hydraulic adjustment needed. So, setting up a sprinkler. <laughs> uh, but it's got a hydraulic motor in it, which is what drives the sprinkler. And uh, these days I'll take one of those apart just to see how it works. But the thing I just discovered on the way out here is my uh, BRB button. I'll be right back. Isn't actually linked to the BRB for some reason. It's linked to the intro page, and I don't want that. I am getting. I'm going to do that later. I'm now sort of feeling irritated. Um, not at having done that, but at the fact that they're taking the time to go away. Number four is that one. I just want two out of here and then we'll use the number eight. One, two. don't want to use the tweezers for this, I just want to use that one. Come on, turn over. Because now I want this one to turn. I was going to say it wouldn't. There we go. Now let's fill this with the remaining colour, which is colour number eight. Of course, I cannot remember for the life of me what I was talking about before I went out and did that to um, fix the sprinkler. But never mind. I know roughly speaking I was talking about the fact that I'm kind of amazed I can just talk for two hours non-stop. Whereas at one time I wouldn't have been able to do that. I've got some um, pretty beads here. A string off for some to do something with. I don't quite know what. I kind of, kind of like these, all sort of sparkly inside. I shall have to think of something to do with them. I can't remember even why I've got those or where they came from. <laughs> so number eight is the final colour here to complete this picture. I think I have another six of these kits to do. I think all of them probably have a big cat or a cat of some kind in them as well. So, If you like cat pictures, then uh, stay tuned as they say. There is a hair there. Which is no longer there. That's probably one of Emmy's hairs, I think. Now then, if I find any more colours, that I've missed, I'm probably just going to stick one of these in, <laughs> irrespective of what colour it is, rather than uh, spend time getting another colour out. Actually, I'm thinking I'm probably a bit time more tired than I'm uh, thinking because I am feeling like I just want to stop talking. Which usually is what happens when I get tired. And yes, it is Emmy's hair because there's another one there. And I can see this one is grey and, uh, grey and black, which is what Emmy is. She's the only cat that's got grey and Grey on her. So you can actually tell most of most of the cats apart in terms of who's left a hair around. 
If it's black, it's Junior. If it's dark brown, it's Felix. If it's grey, um, it's Emmy. And if it's Ginger, it's Theo. The hardest one actually to to, uh, to work out is uh, Felix because he is really dark brown, so, such that he looks black until you see him next to Junior, who is black, and at which point then it's obvious that he's not the same. In terms of colour, that is. Actually, I was thinking I could probably do with finishing off that bracelet as well. Stainless steel bracelet that I've got just to one side there. I do that on the next stream, get that uh, particular thing finished. Then it can go into the shop. If anybody's interested in uh, particularly chain mail jewellery, that's not as bad as it sounds if you're not familiar with it. It's actually just chain mail is it is a description of a technique. It is not armour. Um, it's actually the, the means or the method of linking rings together or weaving them. Strictly speaking, it's a chain. You are into linking rings of a chain so that's probably where the word chain mail comes from um, and I guess uh, to some extent I've got a feeling mail actually does refer to a type of armor so it's it's likely to be mail made from chain so I guess it does refer to um, armor in some ways but these days it also has the meaning of uh, ring weaving and jewellery. And Moobot, who has actually just done it, has put a, a link to the shop if anybody wants to take a look at uh, jewellery made from weaving rings together. Quite a bit of what's in the shop has actually made, been made at one point or other uh, on stream. So at least one of the original prototypes. That's what you'll see with the pictures that are popping up. Um, I'm trying to do this in the wrong hand. There. <laughs> Those. Uh, pictures of the uh, the jewellery, some of which are chainmail like that is. Now this last colour is the easiest because basically if you see a number, fill it in. because there is only one number left. So it's, you don't even have to sort of recognize if it's the right number. You just fill it in. Because in theory, all the other numbers have been done by now. I do say in theory, because I'm sure we might find some more, but uh, like we did a moment, uh, a few minutes ago with the number four, found a couple of them that hadn't been uh, Placed. When you see me hesitate to pick one out, that's because I'm actually looking for one in the tray that's the right way up to be able to be picked out. You're going to pick them out with the dome upwards.
and sometimes it can be quite hard to spot. may see me doing from time to time is touching the end of the tip with my finger and that is just real that I'm doing that purely to remove the static charge for some reason there seems to be a static charge builds up on this tip I don't know if that's the reason why it's made out of the me uh, metal is to collect a charge of some kind and I'm guessing a, a minor charge does help keep pick these things up. But when you get too much of a charge they all sort of clump, jump to the end and clump around it and that's uh, they get in the way then and that's annoying. So by just touching it with my finger I'm dissipating the charge and um, I only get one when I try and pick things up rather than a whole bunch of them. Now tapping it like that seems to be more successful at turning them over than uh, dropping this thing on the desk. So even though I've done one picture of this I've just learnt something new about a good way of uh, causing the dots to flip over. One of the things I like about doing new crafts like this is you learn something. Learn how to do something brand new or you know learn in this particular case just a new tip for doing something. But uh, learning. I love learning new things. It's partly why I um, do a lot of crafts is because it's it you know you learn something new and the fun bit is learning it's why i love well, it's one of the reasons why i like programming because i'm always having to learn new things to achieve an effect or something that i want in in the program And it's one reason why I suspect I will like doing the flame work. Not only because it's always fascinated me, but because it, it, it will be something that I will have to learn a lot about how to do it. And it's the learning bit which is fun, as well as the doing of course. So if this is something you've not seen before, um, I don't actually know what an official name for it is. Um, Magic Dots uh, was uh, suggested on the last stream, but the the thing itself is based on something called um, Diamond Dots. Uh, but I suspect this is a clone, given the fact that it's a lot cheaper than a, a, a Diamond Dots branded kit would be. But essentially all it's doing is putting little plastic dots which, which have a faceted dome uh, onto sticking them one at a time onto this image behind and then when you complete it you're left with a very sparkly picture. Which is you know, quite fun to look at from a distance. doesn't take quite as much skill 
to do as some of the other things like um, the pyrography or the carving but you know sometimes it's nice not to have to sort of concentrate on sharp knives or sharp pointy things or even uh, yeah actually I was just thinking then it's amazing how many of the things that I do rely on sharp pointy things so there's the carving which of course relies on sharp pointy chisels and then there is the punch craft which relies on sharp pointy needle and then there's a scraper board which relies on sharp pointy scrapers hmm. I guess the pyrography doesn't but that's sort of a, a very hot pointy thing <laughs> maybe the common bit is the pointy things but uh, That's probably taking the analogy a little bit too far. Yeah, even even the airbrushing, which I've not done on stream, but uh, that that needs um, a real sharp, pointy needle in it, um, and those things are really sharp and pointy. Having stuck one in my finger before now, it hurts. That was whilst I was cleaning it, so I got the full needle out. But uh, otherwise, it's not quite as easy to jab it in your finger when you when it's actually in the airbrush. But so sometimes the static electricity comes in useful. When you Right there, where I've just accidentally dumped dots onto the picture. Right, there's not too many left. I'm hoping I've got enough in this tray. I've only got another six. Yeah, should have. I only need another seven. And now, what I won't be able to do is get these to turn over. There we go, there's one. They'll never turn. I was about to say they never turn over when you want them to. Oh, I think I've just got four left. Now that is sheer coincidence. It might look like there was five in the tray, but there's a little. That's just oh, there's some more at this end. I was about to say I got exactly the right number. Come on. Right, that should be the last dot. So, have I missed any? I can't see any. So what I'm going to do now is just make sure they are all pressed down. And that is the image complete. So, turn it so it matches the camera angle, which is about there. Didn't realise there was that much delay on the video signal, and so that's the uh, that's a completed uh, picture. So you can now see what one of these things look like. I wish I could see it. I can't see it with these glasses on. Uh, they're short range glasses. I need my longer range glasses. To look at it, what it looks like on the uh, on the monitor. Yeah, it's quite nice, is that? It's interesting how my two monitors show that differently. I've got one where the picture is quite large and one where I'm just watching the OBS broadcast window, which is smaller. But of course, pixels, the smaller you make pixels, the more sharp it looks, which is probably why. But if I just move this slightly, if I can, you should get the, there you go. You can see the, the twinkling and um, sparkling effect that you get. And of course, if you just move past this, walk past it, for example, you see that sparkling effect as you walk past of a shadow or something moves and you get uh, an amazing sparkly, uh, sparkly image, which of course, I guess, is the idea. Uh, 
Um, well, that's finished. I don't really want to start. An I mean, I have got another one here. Which I might open just to see what it is. And I've got some more over there. But I tell you what, I'm going to open this and just see what the image is. Because I can't actually remember what I bought. But what I might do then is do is just finish off the stream by doing... Um, I'm going to be reckless. I'm going to throw these away. <laughs> I'm going to put them in the bin. There. I've actually done it. I've thrown away some material. <laughs> Let's just put that to one side. Let's have a look and see what this one is. Um, then I might just finish off the bracelet. I'll do some more work on the bracelet just while uh, we can, you know, for a little while on the stream. So we finished a bit earlier than I was expecting. So what's this one? Ah, oh, this is the elephant. So every time you get in a kit, you get the dots, and you obviously get the picture, which is which has been uh, Shiggy NC. Good evening, welcome, and thank you for the host. That's very kind of you, and uh, everybody that's uh, joining. <laughs> welcome. Good evening. That's that a green head. <laughs> That reminds me, I should get some um, emoticons drawn up, I guess. Um, yes, I was uh, just about to say, you know, this is what you get with one of these kits. So you get the dots, the um, the picture which has uh, got the glue on it, uh, a tray and the pen, and a little bit of stuff, which get stuffed into the end of the pen which is supposed to I guess help pick up the dots I don't know if it does or not but I keep reusing the same one can I make some happy little trees I could make happy little trees but I'd be um, a lot easier doing it with a different kit uh, I'm just wondering where are my happy little trees I've got some happy little trees somewhere I know I've got some because I was waxing them There you go, a couple of happy little trees. <laughs> I've got four of those. I don't know where the other two are, but there you go. Happy little trees. <laughs> now that was something you weren't expecting, wasn't it? Uh, I happen to have them to hand. I'd love to know where the other two have gone anyway. This is pyrography, just in case you didn't realise. Made with um, a heated uh, metal tool. So they were all drawn by hand. <laughs> you didn't think they'd look very good? Um, very, fair enough, I guess. Blimey, that took a long time to appear. Oh, no, it didn't. I just mixed it up with the message before Shiggy NC again. Thank you for the follow this time. Um, they look good. They are beautiful. I hope so. How about I show you a bigger uh, image then? If pyrography is of interest. Pyrography. As in fire and drawing so uh, painting with heat or in other words as I describe it so this is all done using uh, one of these which is a heated metal tip so this was all drawn using this um, yes but not tonight um, I've had a quite a tiring day and I don't like to use the the, the uh, pyrography 
Uh, so is D, thank you very much for the follow. Dan Verbo, you too as well, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> oh, what was that? Oh yes, that's the that's the other one, yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you for that, uh, Nathan UTS. Uh, there's always next month. Because it doesn't remind you, so you know, you just uh, when it's uh, when it's time's up, you can always come back. Um, but yes, this this pyrography is uh, is 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 done. I'm, I'm I've been in fact I was doing it on my last stream, but uh, just tonight I'm I'm a bit tired, and I uh, the chances are, or when you're doing pyrography, one of the things is it's not something you can erase very easily. So if I'm feeling tired, I tend not to want to do things like that where you know, a mistake is hard to rectify. And um, 11431567, I'm surprised I can read that so easily at this distance. Thank you very much for the follow. And Neo GPT as well. Thank you for the follow. And I know I was getting them out of order, but meh. And the broadcasting. <laughs> Oh dear, I was kind of surprised uh, people there actually want to uh, subscribe. That's very nice of you, thank you, at least for the thought. <laughs> um, but yes, so uh, I probably will continue with this on my next stream. Unfortunately, that's probably going to be next weekend. Um, I, um, at the moment, I stream either Saturday or Sunday night. Uh, I've got a lot of work to do outside of work which means I don't have a lot of time to stream but uh, obviously those of you that have followed will get the notification when I go live again and I do tweet as well so it's at Zerogan Art so I'll tweet when I'm about to go live so um, you will be able to uh, to come and uh, take a look um, but hopefully we'll do this we'll be doing this next one it's uh, there's about three or four hours of work left on this before it's it's finished but it's getting there. This is one of our pussy cats who sometimes appears. He's um, he's playing out at the moment. But this is a ginger pussy cat called Theo. And I'm just wondering if I've got any others around. Um, I don't particularly want to start anything at the moment, but um, anything else at the moment. So I mean, there is pyrography-wise. This is another one. This is a memorial plaque actually for another cat. Actually, not one of not one of ours, but it was uh, of a, another ginger pussy cat. And incidentally, on the screen at the right there is an, uh, another piece of art form which is called scraperboard. That's another thing that gets done on stream. So if you like, uh, you know, like seeing art or artistry, and uh, the scraperboard that uh, comes up and there's jewelry making as well, just in case you like jewelry. And I'm meaning heavy duty jewellery here like stainless steel. We do the fancy stuff with aluminium like which is what's showing on the side. Um, that image which has just popped up is, is carving. We do carving, wood carving. That was uh, of a rose and that there is of a dragon. That was done on stream as well. Wood block printing. Wood block printing. I, I'm, a, I'm aware of it. It's not something I've done. Um, it kind of would be in keeping in that I do the carving so I can do the carving of the wood blocks as well but it isn't actually something I've done it, it's an interesting craft is wood or, or creating the wood blocks because you have to create them in negative so you carve away the bits that you want to be printed which can be fun or alternatively actually I've said which it depends on how you do it because you can print them two ways. You can either surface print them, um, which is which then means that you uh, the the bit that's stuck up is the bit that gets the ink on, or you can reverse print them, which means that you you fill in the carving with ink and then you wipe the surface off, and so it's just the the stuff that's got the ink in which then prints. So it's 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 something I've uh, not actually looked at. No, Conley, I don't. I'm assuming that's a small game, but no, there's uh, there's no games. Um, yes, unfortunately, you box it. It was it was an old cat though. It's about 15 years old. 
and that was some time ago. Uh, Dan Robo, you've always done um, Then be an artist. Um, you know, uh, every artist that's out there started with the skills of a toddler and got better. <laughs> so um, you, you don't have an excuse there. It, it really, a lot of it really is just practice. Don't don't get put off by not getting what you want. The um, the the way in which you get better is to practice at it, and if you don't practice, you don't get better. Um, but it, it's it's not being worried about making a mistake. You know, you can either raise it or just start again, and that's the that's the trick to get better. So if you want to if you want to do it, go ahead and do it. Just practice lots and lots of practice, and. Uh, you don't need to anything fancy, just a pencil and paper. Yeah, don't give up. That's that is the trick. I mean, it's like it's like this. I, mean, I say I'm not very good at this, um, but and I've only been doing pyrography now for about two years. Uh, well, uh, it's about three years actually, but uh, but I haven't done any for about a year. And it really is just, uh, I'm a lot better than I was when I started. The first ones I did were not very good. Um, they were not bad, but they were not very good. And they get better. And every time I do another image, and this is a different image, it's a different style to what I normally do. And I'm just doing it in a different style so that I um, learn something and actually practice and get better at it. I, I the, the cat images I've done before, I've done using a different technique which actually makes the fur look like fur. It physically um, cuts into the wood and creates a, a dimensional surface. I've been trying really hard on this one not to do that, so I'm using a different technique. And, and when I'm looking at this, I go, that's not actually as good as I would normally do. But that's because I'm doing something I've not done before. And that's the, that's the trick on it, is, you know, uh, a few times when I've been doing this, I'm looking and going, you know, what I could do better. But then I wouldn't learn if I just scrapped it and started again. So I'm persevering with it a little bit, but it is uh, it's something that I'm learning. Mm. So, yes, don't give up. And have I got anything else that I can... Just demonstrate, just whilst we're here, because I, I'm... Oh, yes, I mentioned the scraper board. Uh, I should give these a clean, but just some more out for you. Um, before, because we are getting towards the end of the stream, so I don't really want to start something new, but uh, um, this is a bit dusty. But this is uh, this is a, this is an art form, which is called scraper board. So what this is, is this this black surface that you're looking at is on top of um, china clay which then has a backing board on the back so it's a backing board with china clay and then a black ink over the top you scrape the ink away to reveal the white of the clay and uh, by you know doing thick lines thin lines different patterns you can create all sorts of shading in effect so this one is uh, is called moonrise Oh, so it's called Earth Rise. It's, it's the Earth from the Moon. If I get rid of the dust, I'm doing this really carefully because I don't want to actually scratch it. But that's uh, that's what that's one image, and then we've got once you've uh, once you've uh, scraped away the the black, you can actually even colour the the clay itself. You can. Uh, you can put ink into onto it and then you can get a completely different effect like this. So this is like a, yeah, it's a very good for a, a night scene. So the, one of the lights is acting like the moon. <laughs> but this is, this is sort of just a cottage at night and then the, the colour in the grass around just does something different to the image. It just makes it really sort of stand out really well. So there's a, another one. Um, but you can do portraits as well. So um, 
I'll actually show you the very first scraper board that I did. So this is a relatively new art form to me, or, or, or medium to me, it's not something I've done much of. So I'll just show you the very first one that I did, uh, which is this one, which is actually um, a portrait. Um, it's a portrait of a guy called John Miles. And he is, um, or he was in the charts uh, a few years ago now, but he's still involved in the music industry. He's the lead guitarist and the musical director for Tina Turner, or he was for quite a few of her last tours. I don't know if, he, if she's doing any more. Um, but he was also an artist in his own right, and he, he's now also a musical director and principal arranger in The Last Night of the Proms. Um, and the European continent. So he's uh, he's a guy, friend of ours, and that's a, a picture of him on stage. That's the very first one I did. <laughs> so I was rather surprised at just how well it came out, never having done any scraper board before. All of these were done on stream, by the way. So that's one one reason why I stream is it causes me to do art and crafts. And here's one that I'm particularly, particularly like. It's of a, a leopard, of course, uh, coming out of the night. Um, and uh, I think this took about, I think this took about 10 hours to do, because there's that many uh, lines on there, and little scratches on there, um, all, all carefully, oh yeah. I'll say carefully positioned. That's you don't actually sort of say I'm going to do one there and there. You tend to sort of be a little bit more loose about it, but um, you know, positioned in such a way that you get the uh, the, the different shading that's there. But uh, yeah, all sorts of things done on stream. You like that one? Thank you very much. It, it, I kind of like all of them because they, they, they're they different things, but it is certainly one of my favourite. I love the way I managed to get the eyes on this. Um, unfortunately, I'm not sure the camera probably isn't showing it quite so well, but in, in person you can see more of the lines and of course they look like hair um, on the cat here. And so you've got all the the fur, if you like, and the eyes, which have got the, you know, the, you know, the, the stripes and things in the eye. Um, showing up really lovely. So it, it's one of my favourites is this. But I think uh, you know that of John uh, is absolutely fantastic and uh, uh, the uh, this one again also done on stream which and when we added the colour to that and it just made the pic just changed the picture completely. I mean it looked nice before but when you added the green to it it just went wow. So I know the eyes <laughs> Actually, that was the second one I did, and it was one I couldn't resist doing because I've always wanted to do Earthrise as a as an artist. I've always wanted to do something like Earthrise. It was a an iconic image from NASA, of course, and it's always sort of grabbed my attention or, or my fascination in a way. It's, it's it's an inspiration in a way, and I've always wanted to do it. And that was the second one that I did because scraperboard with that black jet deep black just looked so right for doing this I couldn't resist um, what else can I show you at the moment um, I can show you a couple of other things so this is sort of a general just general advert for what we do on stream so you maybe come back in the in the future but this is another one uh, this is I'll describe this more as miniature rug making, but it, it's it's made using a technique in the same way that they actually make rugs and um, expensive carpets, which is using a, a needle uh, from the back of it in this particular case. So this is the front, but we work from the back, and uh, you you push the thread through the material and draw it back to create a loop, which is how they how they uh, create some carpets. Um, but that's uh, this is of um, a steam engine called the Mallard. <laughs> I don't have Thomas. Uh, this is Mallard, which is the uh, steam world record holder for the fastest steam engine. Um, 
And that's a that's a, a picture of that one, and I do I do have another one around somewhere. Desmond uh, Desmond DDL Dynamic Data Language. Um, <laughs> Uh, sorry, Desmond DL. Thank you very much for the follow. I'm just looking to see if I've got uh, it's. I've got another one of a more modern engine. Um, but that one's not coming to mind. So it's around here somewhere. I'm a little bit. Uh, everything's a little bit topsy turvy because we've just moved studio. Um, I'll get some of the carving and show you that. Actually, I've just found a lot of stuff. So I tell you what, I'm going to I'm going to give you a, a display. So we were talking about um, pyrography. Here's another couple of images for pyrography. These are the first two pyrographic images I've done. Um, this actually was the first of a cat, which is called Felix, and this one was the second, which is um, Junior. It's called. And these, are, these were done uh, in a way that creates an actual fur-like texture. And which is why I'm consciously trying to do something different when I, uh, on the one that I showed at the start. Um, but uh, a little bit of carving. This is the carving we're currently working on. Uh, and again, I've been doing this one on stream. I just haven't done it for a little while. And this is of an owl. So this is a what they call a relief carving. So it's on a background. So you only get sort of half of it, so to speak. But that's one that's being worked on at the moment. And I haven't done any on stream, but I do I do have some power carving tools, some, some high speed rotary carving tools, uh, which I'm learning how to use. But one of them is um, is what I did. You know, this is this is the first thing I did using one of those. And it's not great by any means, but it needs practice. But this is a fish leaping out of the water done with not with a chisel but with a rotary carving tool a bit like a dremel but more uh, industrial shall we say and so a proper um, carving device and that was just made out of any old sort of half uh, tree branch you've I pointed out the picture, but this is uh, this is of a dragon. This is a a, um, a replica of a an image from the from a cover of a book. One of my favourite authors is a uh, was an author called Anne McCaffrey, who did a series of books about a a world called Pern, on which there were intelligent dragons. And this is of one of those. It's off a cover picture by her favourite artist. And this is just sort of my interpretation of, of that particular dragon. It's it's a dragon called Ruth. Um, so that was carved again on stream using sharp chisels. A little bit of pyrography. This was a door hanger. This was a this was kind of a challenge to do um, two images in, or an image in an hour. So each side took an hour to do. So a two hour project. So this was done in one stream. Um, so a, an awake fox and a sleeping fox. It's a door hanger. <laughs> so. And here's a picture that I am, I am reasonably quite proud of. Of the uh, salute. Uh, this is an image which is called Salute to Sunset. So it's the uh, an elephant. I don't know if it's Indian or an African elephant. I guess it would be an African elephant, um, given that there's a giraffe in the background. But uh, that was uh, again something I've kind of wanted to do for a while, and, and then did. And it was actually the first time I ever did any trees <laughs> in pyrography, which is what then prompted me doing those two that you saw to start with. And uh, yeah, 
Big cats and cats seem to be a, a general theme. So this is pyrography as well. And this is obviously a big cat. <laughs> and Nakmui, good evening. Welcome to the stream this evening. Um, so again, yes, big cat staring out into the world or look, I don't know if he's watching something, watching a, 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 a his dinner, maybe parading out in the distance. But uh, yeah, that one, this one was quite a challenge, really, because of uh, all the different contrasts that was in there. And it's a it's it's a lot of work. It doesn't might not look like it, but it, at this size, it is actually a heck of a lot of work to do uh, to get all this hair like texture that's in there. Um, and the final one that I've got to show off is um, is it uh, is this? It's a monorail. It's actually a monorail from Disneyland in Florida. Is it in Disneyland or Disney World in Florida? I can't remember which. Um, but this this was this was done because I when I first started airbrushing, which I haven't done on stream yet. But when I first started uh, airbrushing, the the first thing I did was my computer case, but uh, which is which is covered in fish. Oh, aquatic animals. There's a dolphin in there. There's some uh, rays, and there's a turtle, I think. Um, but it was a watercolor PC, so it was playing on the theme of an aquarium, and so I, I did that as my first uh, airbrush project. The second one I did was um, uh, replicate an image that I'd taken as a photograph on holiday, which was of, of this um, uh, monorail, and. I happened to have that in front of me when I was thinking, what can I do as a pyrographic image? And uh, I, I'll do that. And so that's uh, actually that's an interesting one, Nakamura. I was um, uh, I kind of think about doing that. The, the only thing I've got a, a bit wary of is, of course, the copyright images, um, which. Is skirting on the skirting on the uh, on the edge of uh, permissibility with it being a copyright image as to whether or not um, you know this this fan art is sort of uh, on the edge. Um, so I, I kind of thought it because Overwatch does seem to be something that's popular with people at the moment. Um, and all things Zelda stuff. I think somewhere around here I've got a, a Triforce uh, on a box for example but yeah I'll have to grab some maybe, maybe that'll be one of the next projects Nak Mui. Um what sort of character do you think would be a good one to uh, start with what well, creates some from scratch yeah, yeah as in don't exist at all um, that's interesting because um, daft as it sounds, I don't have that good an imagination. <laughs> uh, some things I can see, and I have, you know, I, I can get a picture of in my mind, and other things I just can't, um, I can't do. But it's uh, well, if the people want to watch, the you know, they can do. I'm not specifically trying to do these things because to get people to watch. Yeah, it's nice and it's great fun to interact with you guys and talk about it. Um, but the uh, you know, part of the reason why I stream and hopefully why you want to watch me streaming is that I enjoy what I'm doing. So I, I do it, you know, to practice and, and enjoy my art. And hopefully you guys get some of that as well and maybe learn something about it if you're interested in it as well. But uh, yeah. Um, but pyrography on, on wood, uh, I'm not about to start and try and do a pyro You can do pyrography on paper, but you need to do it um, fairly on fairly thick paper to, to, to do a reasonable job with it. Uh, it's just too hard to do otherwise. But uh, yeah, I'll have a think about it. I've got, um, I've got Theo to finish first, though, which is the one that's here. I'm going to finish him before we start anything more. I think um, I really kind of need to just sort of uh, finish this off 
uh, finish the off and finish the carving which will be uh, the sort of the next project I think finish off that owl before I start something new but um, I shall I shall uh, bear it in mind and feel free to uh, to suggest anything um, yeah talk of carving by the way <laughs> this is sort of um, I, the carving I do with chisels sharp chisels uh, which I put away so I can't show you one at the moment um, although I have just bought a new set of chisels but this was done with knife with a knife and a, a, um, a, a knife for carving as opposed to a carving knife which you use on food um, but a knife for carving is a completely different way of working to using a chisel and so this was something that uh, I, is the first Again, first thing I tried using a knife, and it's purely done using a knife, and uh, just learning how to control the knife. It's not great, and I could do a lot better now, having had some practice. But it is all about practice. So, but again, you know, that's the first thing. So, its general form and shape is okay. It's just not really good in in the, the details and and the way in which it's. Uh, Execute it to some extent. A cat's forelimb does not look like that. It's a bit out of proportion, but you know what? That's the um, sort of thing you, you learn by doing. I was just about to show you a chisel of a new set of chisels, which um, arrived uh, a couple of days ago, well, a few days ago. So these are a bigger set of chisels. As opposed to the the other ones I've got, I really don't know where they are. Um, but the other ones are, are small hand chisels. They're about uh, about half the length of this. These are a slightly bigger set. Uh, these are obviously meant for for working um, on larger pieces, shall we say? And I don't know. That's not bad. It's not greatly sharp, but it's not bad. I'd hesitate to do that with my um, with my hand chisels. They're, they're sharp enough to cut me even just doing that, uh, so I do have to be careful with them. But uh, I, I thought I'd try uh, you know something that's got a bigger handle on, and some of the um, you know, just try some some things for so some of the, the larger pieces. It uh, or things like the owl where I want to remove a lot of material. Using larger chisels like this is a bit easier than trying to do it using the smaller hand chisels. Um, and interesting, there is one in here, this one, which is a spoon, uh, a spoon chisel. And because of the shape of it, you can get into the bowl of a spoon, so you can carve into something, which is uh, which is a chisel I don't actually have in in the hand chisels. I keep meaning to get one because I'd like to do some interior carving and possibly some spoons but uh, uh, another one to play with. I'm keeping them in the, in the bag at the moment because they're, uh, they're, they're oiled and I don't want to get oil on things. Uh, they're oiled to keep, the, uh, to keep them from rusting actually. Um, and that is one thing that you kind of have to do if you're putting chisels away for or, steel chisels away for a long while is oil them because otherwise they'll go rusty and then they're not very good but there we go and there's nothing else I can show you I'm afraid at the at the moment everything else is uh, either away or um, away <laughs> I can't remember where it is um, I'm trying to think what 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 is because I, I, I up until just recently I've done five crafts on on stream. There has been pyro and I've, I always have a problem remembering the five and it sounds daft, but because it's only five and I've done them. But there was pyrography, there's scraper board, there's carving, there's the punch craft, and there's the jewelry making. That was it, the chain mail. So um, yeah, things like uh, this, which is something I need to finish. This is a mains. Um, chain. Um, it's it's made out of stainless steel, so it's heavy. Uh, and being for a man, it needs to be about eight to eight and a half inches long. 
which is uh, generally larger than it would be for a woman. It's actually only just long enough for me. So it needs to be a little bit longer. Um, but that's uh, th this is a, a weave of chain. Each of these was a, an individual ring which was uh, has been woven into this pattern. And it, it's, uh, it's called candy cane but it's kind of like a spiral. You sort of, in fact you can probably see it on, on screen. It sort of spirals around. If you get the weave right that is. If you get it wrong it looks nothing like it. <laughs> But I need to finish this as well, so this can go into the shop and I've got another couple that I want to do in stainless steel. Um, normally I'll work in aluminium rings, but uh, um, I do also do some work with titanium. Uh, titanium rings and uh, now stainless steel, I want it to add in there as a material. The titanium is, is quite hard to work with. It's a really heavy, not heavy, it's a really hard, um, stiff material when you're trying to bend them which is what you have to do to weave them. And uh, did I have to make your wrists tired? Stainless steel is supposed to be hard, but I actually found it not very hard at all to work. So, just me being different, I guess. Right, well, unfortunately, um, it's now 10 past nine and I've been streaming for, uh, well, what is it? About an hour and three quarters. Um, but I need to, uh, I need to close it down for tonight. I have a rest, get ready for work tomorrow. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, I am going to switch to that camera. I got it right, my new toy, a stream deck. It's fantastic for doing this sort of thing. I want to say thank you to everybody that's followed this evening and uh, to uh, um, Shiggy, um, Shiggy, yeah, Shiggy NC, who hosted me. Um, Thank you very much for doing that. That's absolutely fantastic. And uh, it's been great talking to you, showing off some of the art stuff that I've done. Hi, Shiggy. Thank you. Um, and I'm going to say thank you. Look out for me again next weekend. Uh, I should be around hopefully Saturday night, but Saturday or Sunday evening will be one of them. And by then, hopefully, my decorating will be done and I'll be able to start streaming in the middle of the week as well. We'll carry on with uh, Theo probably at the next stream. Uh, we'll then look into finishing off the other two things before we start something new. Perhaps as Nat Mui suggested with a, uh, a character from something like Overwatch perhaps. I don't know. Any suggestions are always welcome. Thank you. <laughs> don't worry about it. I'm not worried about it. I'm just saying thank you very much for doing it, Shiggy. It was great. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you again. Um, Obviously, if anybody else wants to, feel free to follow me. You can also catch me on uh, Twitter occasionally. It's uh, Zaraganart on there. And, uh, of course, since it's my shop, I'm going to point out the shop, which, of course, Moobot's been um, advertising for me. But uh, that's on uh, Etsy. Etsy.com slash Zaraganart. Um, that, uh, if you're interested in any of the jewellery stuff. But that's it. Thank you. Hope to see you again, but bye for now. And I'll remember to push the right button this time. Then you're probably speaking English a lot better than I am, <laughs> Shiggy. Thank you very much. And again, bye.